All right. Good morning, everyone. So we have these palm branches because it's Palm Sunday, and I'm going to teach you how to fold them into a cross. So you can fold it with me. If you have any questions later, you can come and find me. Um, I'm also going to do just a little reading for you about Palm Sunday. So on the first Palm Sunday, as Jesus rode a colt into Jerusalem, the crowds were gathering, ecstatic that the Messiah had come. The one who would bring power and prosperity to Israel, who would bring freedom from the Roman oppression. Laying their cloaks on the ground and waving their branches to worship him as he entered, there was clearly a feeling of excitement and anticipation among the people. They were shouting, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Are you with me? Okay, now the tricky part. Oop. I'm going to fold it up. I'll show you all later. Come find me. To them at the moment, all was about to be right in the world. Just a mere five days later, they're convincing Pilate to let go a murderer and to crucify Jesus. If we stop the story here on Palm Sunday, the sign of the cross would be depressing and tragic. But because we know of Jesus' resurrection, we can carry these crosses around with us as a sign of hope in Jesus' death and resurrection. If you have a longer one on the end, you can tuck it into the back and it'll stay there. Thank you. Good morning. Miss Ellie and I here have a few announcements for you this morning. And before I forget, any families out there or grandparents, um, we have Holy Week kits for you. This looks so interesting, doesn't it? Um, Holy Week kits. So grab those for your kids on the way out. They're at the kids' crew table. Um, they're also in the nursery if you're headed in there and downstairs. Um, and these walk you through starting today, Palm Sunday, all the way to Easter. Um, there's devotionals in there for each day. So make sure you grab one of those um, if there's a family with kids in your life. They're out, out there for you. Um, now we also have something really special for you this morning um, in a way that you can partner with our kids crew. So each month, Miss Ellie and I, um, we teach Power Up and we alternate with Mr. Joe and Mr. Curtis. Um, and each month there's a new theme. And to go along with that theme, we've been doing some fun incentives. So what have we done? Um, so last month, or a couple months ago, Kaylee and I ate crickets. Really tasty. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, this month, I don't know, other than that, Mr. Joe and Mr. Curtis got pied in the face. That was exciting. Kind of a scary picture, um, if you've seen that. Um, and then this past month, we decided to do something um, past ourselves. So something for other people. And um, the way that kids can earn these incentives is by memorizing their Bible verse, by coming to Sunday school, by filling out their sermon notes, um, and then if they reach this certain point, then we get to do that special thing. So this past month, we decided that for each of those things, um, we would donate one dollar to an organization. Um, I don't know many many five-year-olds who have a lot of money, <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> They were able to earn a dollar by doing each of those things um, to give to this organization. And we decided to give to an organization called Illuminations. Um, if you're not familiar with Illuminations, we're going to explain that here in just a second. Do you have the final number of what we raised? Yes. So the total number that we raised was $119.63. And 63 cents. That was somebody who brought their actual allowance and oh. donated, which is amazing. <laughs> so if you think about raising one dollar at a time, that's a lot of dollars for Kids Crew to raise that much money, which is amazing. So we are here this morning hoping that you guys will partner with us to match that donation for Illuminations. And now you're sitting there and you're like, I have no idea what Illuminations is. We just explain it. Yeah, um, well, we're gonna explain this in a funny way this morning. Do we have anybody out there who knows how to do a sword drill? Oh, come on. <laughs> Over here? Yeah, maybe okay, an adult. 
Yep. <laughs> you can come on come up. On I up. have a Bible We for need you your here. help. I know there were a lot more out there. but There were lots of hands shooting up when we asked that question. Everybody wants to do a sword drill. Okay, but okay. you have to use our Bible. So here's a Bible for you. Okay, and we're going to race. Okay, so here's your Bible. Okay, perfect. And we are looking at 2 Thessalonians 3.3. 3. We're going to time you. How fast can you go? Ready? Set. Go. We need like a Jeopardy theme song here. <laughs> a little dance music. Anybody wants to do that? Ooh, some good whispers. Good. <laughs> I love it. Some gifted people out there. Good. Really good. Keep it going. You found it? Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, we're going to wait just one more second. Three, three. three. We did this in um, Power Up, and Quaid, Quaid out there, did a great job finding this verse for us. Mm-hmm. He got it right away. He's awesome. <laughs> All right, did you find it? Do okay, read it will you go us? ahead and read it for us? Yeah, good luck with that. Uh, let's see. I wish I knew how to read Spanish. That's the problem here. <laughs> Let's see. I took it for six years, and I know less than the average person. Pero el señor el fiel y el los fortalecerá y los protegerá del maligno. Awesome. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have you read it in just a second here. Could you just really quickly explain to the congregation what that verse means in your own words? It sure does. (laughs) (laughs) Is there anyone else out there? I mean, clearly we all understood that, right? So can anyone else tell us what, what that verse means? Nobody? That's kind of embarrassing. That is embarrassing. Okay, so one of our kids' crew kids actually memorized this verse, so maybe it would help if we just listened to it. Yeah. That's what we did downstairs, and it kind of helped a little bit, right? Okay, so listen closely, because it's kind of quiet, but we do have a video of her. Clear it up for you? <laughs> Nothing. So Illuminations is this awesome organization that um, translates the Bible. And when we were in Kids Crew, we asked, so what would help? What would help us understand this? You guys can answer. Anyone can answer. English. English. How easy. How simple. So we can go to this translation, right? But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Which is an amazing verse. Mm -hmm. Um, So there are one billion people around the world that are considered to be in Bible poverty. One billion people that don't have access to the Bible in their own language and in their heart language is, um, is what they refer to it as. So the way that we understood it or that we heard it, when it was talked about was like, take any passage and think about, um, even if you just don't have the right translation or don't have a good translation. So think about like Jesus walking on water and a bad translation of that could say Jesus swam. Like that's not the same story, right? So even having a good translation is so important and there's so many languages that just don't have that. So illuminations, is hoping to translate the scripture into all languages by 2033, which is incredible. Um, And they're working with like the 10 largest Bible translating organizations to partner together and to do that. So they have all of the tools in place to do that. Um, They just need the resources. So it costs $35 to translate just one verse into one language, which might seem like a lot, Um, But you think about all of those remote languages, too, that are in so many different places that um, it's one billion people. Um, So, round of applause for our volunteers. Thank you so much for bearing with us there. All that to say, 
Um, Ellie and I are going to be in the gallery after the service. If you are interested in matching what Kids Crew has already um, faithfully done, that $119.63, that's an important one, the 63 cents. So if you are interested in helping us to match that um, or to go beyond that and to provide um, Bibles for everybody in the world, can you imagine if we came here and we were worshiping God but we didn't have the scripture to go home with? Um, and just how much more difficult that would be. And God speaks through so many different ways, but, but this is a tangible way that we can help our brothers and sisters around the world. Um, and furthermore, we're going to donate to, there's different um, projects that you can choose when you're donating to Illuminations, and we're going to choose the Ukrainian one. So that's a way for us to help our brothers and sisters in Ukraine as well. Um, so kind of twofold. And to leave you guys, we have another video for you of our kids' crew um, and their memorized verse. It is uh, such a blessing what uh, is going on in our children's ministry. And Kaylee has done an incredible job, as everybody here knows. I don't have to tell anybody that. <clears throat> we hear that all the time. And, uh, and Melody, with a great job this morning, I could not have folded that thing and talked at the same time. You know, kind of like one of these, you know, just could not have done it. <laughs> so, so we are thankful uh, for the people that God has blessed this church with who are willing to use their gifts. Um, we have one more video. A couple weeks ago, I was blessed to have one of our young children, I think she's seven, and I don't know if they're here today or not, um, but she came up and just started chatting with me in the morning, and then uh, I was back by the sound booth, and she came up to me again, and she had a prayer request, and maybe you were here for that Sunday. Her dog um, needed some prayer, so, we, so I asked her, do you want us to just pray, do you want me to just pray with you now, or do you want to pray in front of everybody, with everybody? And she definitely wanted to come up front <laughs> and have the whole church pray. But we had an, she had an incredible answer. Oh, she is here today. Good. Um, so we have a video of her sharing about that, uh, that time. Taylor, can you tell us how old you are? Seven. Seven? So what grade are you in? First. First grade. That's wonderful. And Taylor, you, had, you have a puppy, right? Can you tell us about your puppy? Um, when he hurt his hip, um... I was really worried about him, and he um, hid under the bed for like two days, and I got really nervous about him. And when I came here for the weekend, um, we prayed for him, and um, when he, um, when we came back, we um, saw him at the door, and he was fine. Wow! So you think God answered that prayer? That is wonderful. So do you think you'll keep praying to God for more things too? That is so good, Taylor. Taylor, thank you for sharing your testimony with us today. What's your puppy's name? Ziggy. Ziggy. That's a wonderful name for a puppy. All right, thank you, Taylor, for sharing. <laughs> Taylor did such an incredible job, and uh, the reason we wanted to get it recorded and share it with everybody is that uh, I think the week before we recorded it, um, we were sitting at the table with uh, Taylor and her grandma and actually her mom as well, and she was just so excited sharing this story about Ziggy and how, uh, how when she got home, and I don't know if you could hear it real well, so I'm just going to share real fast, how when she got home, um, Ziggy just ran up to the door just like, like Ziggy normally would have, and that hadn't happened for a little while, so she was so excited. And again, as you saw with, with Taylor, just her, um, her faith in prayer, her willingness to share, and clearly she is the better speaker of the two of us in that video. She did such an amazing job. We are so blessed in this church. But as a 
you know, we had a lot of stuff going on this morning, but the reason I really wanted to show Taylor's video still was uh, it shows the power of prayer. We want to be a praying church. Nothing happens apart from God. But it also shows the power of a childlike faith, the humility that children have, and uh, recognizing that there's lots of things that they can't do, but that God can and they want to take these things to God in prayer. Taylor understands the power of prayer. <clears throat> My children understand the power of prayer. Amelia always, if something goes wrong, wants to pray. And I'm going to guess that if you have children that are young children, or you had children who were young and you raised them up in the church, at times you recognize the faith of your children as well. Our children, children just naturally run to God with their problems. So we should watch our children and we can learn from our children. We can learn what Jesus meant in Matthew 18, 3 when he said, unless you repent and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And today you may have your children with you. And uh, this is part of why I wanted to share this as well. Because we hear all the time that parents get a little anxious about their children being in the service with them. And we have intentionally set the service up so it's not the same time as Sunday school because we want children in the service. We want them in the service. And no child is as loud to anyone else as they are to their own parents. <laughs> so, whereas you think they're being loud and horrible, and oh my goodness, this is so bad, people are going to be upset, nobody else cares. You know, and if the people around you do care, well, then that's something they need to work on, right? We need to get in a better place then if we can't handle a child making a little bit of noise in a pew. And I can say that as the parent of young children who sometimes goes beyond the little bit of noise volume. <laughs> as uh, last two weeks ago, my two-year-old, they sit in the front pew in the traditional service as well, and he decided to take off. So he ran around the pew and my wife took off after him and they literally ran laps around that pew until, and my wife had to lead the hymns, so she had to get up front. <laughs> and finally she gave up, stopped, and he was coming, and she lounged over, lunged over, and, and grabbed him across the pew. I assure you, I have not seen your children do that. <laughs> and you know what? It was still okay. It is important that we have your children here. And I'm passionate about this because... When I came here and I took over the youth um, in 2012, so many of our youth had really never been to a service. And you could tell because when they graduated, they never came down to a service. And I don't want that to happen with your children. I want our children in here. Because we can learn a lot from our children in here playing in the pews. Because if you watch them, you'll recognize that they are playing with a carefree joy. Last Sunday when I was at Gary, my two oldest were playing catch in the front pew with the stuffed animal that they brought. That I did kind of give them a, one of these and they stopped playing catch. But, but there's a carefree joy to them. They're not concerned about what people around them think. They're not concerned about what's happening later in the day. They are just being present in the moment. And C.S. Lewis says that that is where we all should be because this present moment, the moment you are in right now, this present moment is where time touches eternity. You will never be closer to God than you are in the present moment. Take a page from the kids in our church. Stop worrying so much about what other people think. Follow the path that they are on 
and just be present in that moment. Today we're going to talk about the two paths that we can choose because there are two paths that we all get to take. Our passage is in Luke 19, it's 28 to 40. <clears throat> so if you would open with me. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, up, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Tell them, The Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they, found, as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They replied, The Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down, to the Mount of, goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this day. Lord, pour your spirit out on this place. Speak to each one of us wherever we're at. And Father, whether you speak to us through the music, speak to us through um, Melody's demonstration or, the, or Taylor's video or Kaylee. Kaylee and Ella's uh, presentation, Father, or through the sermon, Lord, we pray that you would speak to each one of us wherever we're at. And maybe, Lord, you'll even speak to us, to the children, with, through the children around us. But speak to each one of us wherever we are at, Lord. Reveal to us what our next step is in our walk with you. Reveal to us which path we may already be on. Reveal to us what you would have us do, where you would have us go. Oh Lord, show us your ways and help us to be faithful in following them. Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's said that on that first Palm Sunday, there were two processions. One procession came from the east, and that was Jesus riding from uh, Jericho down to Bethany, from, down to Bethany and, and into Jerusalem. The other, it is said, and I don't know that this happened on Palm Sunday. I can't find the actual reference. It's written in a lot of places, and I tried to go back farther to find the reference. So, but Pilate also rode in from the west. Pontius Pilate lived in Caesarea, which is northwest of, of Jerusalem. So he would have ridden down and then over and in through the west side of Jerusalem. I don't know if he came on Palm Sunday, but at some point he wrote in because he would take a legion in for every uh, <clears throat> Jewish festival. Because oftentimes Jewish festivals got a little rowdy and there were uprisings and people getting upset with the Romans and they would want to, um, so the Romans would quell them, those uprisings. So we know for sure that at some point before this festival, um, Pilate also came in from the West. And there were two very different processions. When Pilate came in, he was, would have been riding a stallion with a chariots behind him, with soldiers in armor, with uh, nobility. And they came all via the path that we're going to call the path of the world. They came through a path of pride. Everything about them was to elevate them above the people. You know, we, <clears throat> unlike our children, like we were talking about, tend to 
also concern ourselves with the things of this world, with how we appear, what we, what we wear, what we drive, where we live, you know, sometimes how we act, wanting to act superior to others. How many friends we have, how many followers we have on, on social media. But these are all acts of pride. And pride leads to some bad places. Pride is the root of all of our sin. Satan fell because of his pride. I will, I will, I will five times, ending with I will make myself like the Most High. Satan's sin was pride. <clears throat> Eve ate the apple because of pride. She wasn't just hungry. She recognized that she could have something that wasn't hers, that she wanted. And that was more important to her at that moment than what God had wanted. She elevated herself to a higher position than God. That first sin was ultimately a sin of pride. Adam, same thing. Pride was the cause of the fall, putting ourselves above God saying, I deserve it. My happiness is what is most important. No one can tell me what is right and wrong. I will choose what is right and wrong. That is pride. And we know that that path of pride leads, again, to terrible places. I'm just going to assume that all of you know the great mystic Yoda, Yoda says, fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. And it's interesting because I would say that uh, pride leads to some dark places. And we're going to see in a little bit how fear is a response to that path of pride. But that path of pride goes like this. Pride leads to selfishness. Pride leads to it being all about me. Nobody else really matters but my feelings, what I want. How many of you have had friendships with a really selfish person? <laughs> Anybody ever had serious conversations with somebody who was just really selfish, where it was all about them? Don't raise your hand if the person is sitting next to you. <clears throat> unless you have a, you know, another example for when you leave here. But I've had some of those conversations and relationships. And I'm not talking where our friend is just going through a difficult time, so they're trying to just work through it. I'm talking about every conversation just tends to turn back to them. And it becomes very clear that you're just being used to give them something. Selfishness is that first step through pride, then that path of pride. And when we become that kind of selfish, selfishness leads to loneliness. Nobody wants to be around that person who has made it all about themselves. Selfishness leads to loneliness. <coughs> Excuse me. And ultimately, selfishness will lead to despair. Because when, when we've lost the few people who would talk to us, now all we have is our stuff from our, that we were hoarding up so that we could elevate ourselves. We've lost our friends. When we start to lose that stuff, which that stuff is always fleeting, and whether we lose it because of whatever reason, or it just loses its shine to where it stops being important, then that loneliness leads us to despair because what are we living for at that point? What are we holding on to? The stuff doesn't matter anymore. The people are gone. Ultimately, that path of pride leads us to despair. But thank God, thank God that there is a second 
path. And that is the path that Jesus rode in on from the east, that path of humility. You see, Jesus rode in, Pilate rode in on a stallion. Jesus rode in on a donkey. Pilate rode in being followed by soldiers and chariots and nobility. Jesus rode in being followed by fishermen and tax collectors and and the poor. Pilate rode in in gaudy imperial robes showing how high he was above the rest of the world. Jesus rode in with the robes of an ordinary man showing how low he had become for our sake. Pilate rode in on that path of pride, but Jesus rode in on a path of humility, showing us a better way. And when we come in on that path of humility, it leads us first to wisdom and understanding. We talked about the Beatitudes a few weeks ago. I think that I think it was a few weeks ago. This is very much what Jesus talks about. When we come to him in humility, the first thing that will happen is we will gain wisdom and understanding. Because King David says in Psalm 111, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. And we, when we recognize how low we are, our real place compared to how awesome God is, we will have a healthy fear of God. And when I say a healthy fear of God, of course, you probably know I don't mean that we're afraid of God. But we have a, an awe for God, a respect for God, a love for God. And it is that fear that leads us to desire to know more about our God. And as we pray and we study and we learn about him, we grow in wisdom and understanding. And as we grow in wisdom and understanding, then the next step is we hopefully will grow in righteousness. That when we understand who God is, we will begin to live the way he has called us to live. Humility will lead us to live a righteous life. But not out of fear, being afraid of God. We don't live righteously because we're afraid that God's going to punish us or we're afraid that God's going to abandon us but we live the way God has called us to live because we love God. We have an awe of God, a respect for God. Growing up, I made lots of mistakes, but I loved my parents. And I never wanted to displease my parents. But sometimes I screwed up. But I really tried to live a life that they would be proud but I was never afraid that they would hurt me. I was never afraid that they would abandon me. But I tried doing things right just because I loved my parents. That is what we're talking about with God. Living humbly and recognizing our place with God should draw us into righteous living. And as we are growing in wisdom and understanding and that leads us to righteous living, then we will become deeper in our relationship with God. I had youth a few years ago who were all smarter than me. Um, They probably still are, but they would come to me after youth group and stuff, and they would say to me, we want to go deeper. And I'd ask them, well, what do you mean you want to go deeper? What do you want to... What do you want to study? What do you want to go deeper in? And they didn't know what they wanted to learn or what they wanted to go deeper. And ultimately, I told them, look, you want to go deeper. Right now, for you, going deeper means living what we've already talked about. Because as we live the way God has called us to live, as we do the things we learn through the word of God, and we start living that way, God will take us deeper. We will have a greater understanding as we are living for him. You can only go so deep if all you're doing is studying. We have to live the the way God has called us to live, and then we'll go deeper in our relationship with him, culminating in 
what John of the Cross would call union with God. And I share this with you all the time because I so believe that this is true. That as we get closer to him, we can get so close to God that we can know his will. We can recognize his voice. We can sense his presence. Do you believe that that is possible? Because oftentimes, I look around and I think that we have a lot of people who say, I think I can know God better, but you don't really get the depth of how well we can know God if we will lay down all the things of this world and walk that path of humility towards him. God wants union with us that we may be one with him. That is possible. And Jesus showed us that path on that Palm Sunday. And we also see in this passage that there's two responses to those paths. The response to Pilate was fear. Having Roman soldiers come into the city knowing what is about to happen, if anything, if any uprisings are begun, there's fear in that. But also on that path of pride, the fear that we tend to face is the fear of losing what we have. We are holding so tight to the things of this world because we think that is what will make us happy. We think that is what we need. I have heard stories of so many of our pastors around our country for these giant churches who are so afraid of losing what they have, losing their 15,000 member churches that they begin to do irrational things because at some point they stopped trusting God. At some point they stopped being humble and started thinking that it was about them. And they held on so tight, they were so afraid of losing it, that they made really bad decisions. That is the path and the response, that is the response to the path of pride. But the response to the path of humility is hope. As Jesus walked in, riding on a donkey, not wearing anything special, no dignitaries following him, the people responded and they laid down their cloaks for, him to, for this donkey to walk on. The response to that path of humility is hope. And this fear and this hope is twofold. It's a fear and a hope for today, but also a fear and a hope for eternity. Because that path of pride leads to destruction. That path of pride leads to hell. And maybe when you're one of the people who believes there is no hell, oh, the, the word says Sheol, it just means grave, or, or Gehenna, which just means a place. But Jesus is pretty clear in his word about hell. He's clear in the passage about the rich man and Lazarus that the rich man is not just in a grave. He is in a fiery place, and he longs for Lazarus just to dip his finger in water and touch his tongue. Jesus is talking about hell. In the parable of the, of the dinner feast or the banquet, one person ends up, Jesus tells this parable, a person walks in and they don't have on the wedding clothes, meaning that they haven't gotten rid of the things of the world and dressed in their new clothes with Christ. And Jesus says, bind his hands and his feet and throw him out into the pit where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus is talking about hell. And in Matthew 28, when Jesus says, do not be afraid of the one who can kill the body, but fear the one who can kill both the body and the soul. He is talking about hell. That path of pride, the path that the things of this world will take you down, is that path of destruction. But again, praise God that Jesus came into Jerusalem from the east, riding on this path of humility. Because that path of humility leads to eternal life. It leads to that, to a hope of that union with God today. But better than that, it leads to a union with God for eternity. 
we have two paths that we can choose. And perhaps, most likely, you don't even know it, but you've already chosen one of those paths. And I don't know what that path is for either one of, for any of you, but you are on one of those paths right now. So let's be conscious about where we're at. And let's make a choice today to follow the path that leads to life. Because I ask that you would take the path that leads to wisdom and understanding over possessions and reputation. The path that leads to righteousness over comfort. The path that leads to seeking union with God over compromise with this world. Choose the path that Jesus showed us. Choose the path of humility today. Turn back to Christ. Would you pray with me? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this day. Merciful God, as, as we enter this holy week, we pray that you would turn our hearts back to Jerusalem, to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Stir up within us the gift of faith that we may not only praise you with our lips, but that we may follow the way of the cross. Lord, help us to take this path of humility, that we would seek you with our whole hearts, and that we would let go of the things of this world. Father, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a time now for reflection. The altars are always open. We have people who will come up and pray with you if you want to come and pray. Reflect on where you are. Reflect on where God is calling you. It's also our time of offerings, so you can reflect on how God has blessed you and how we can get back to God. The offering baskets are in the back, as always. I just encourage you to really spend a moment asking God to reveal to you which path you are on. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the ways that you have blessed each one of us, that we have the opportunity to give back to you a little bit of the bounty you have given to us. Father, we thank you for the ways you provided for this church, that we have been able to be a force in this area for reaching the lost for you that we have been able to be a part of building your kingdom here on earth, starting right here in Chautauqua County, Lord. Father, we thank you for all the ways you have been blessing us, for all the things you've been doing through this church. and pray you continue to work. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God from whom all. This week, may God give you the wisdom to know the right, the courage to choose it, and the strength to endure. Amen.